पी एन आर एल ट्रांसेंडिंग जेनरेशन इन नेचुरल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट फॉर द पुअर इन द फार्मिंग सेक्टर इंडिया मैसिव एग्रीकल्चरल सेक्टर एम्प्लॉयज अबाउट सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन येट डिप्लीटेड सॉइल्स लैक ऑफ मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी एंड अपग्रेडेशन ऑफ स्किल्स poor access to infrastructure non availability of inputs on time like quality seeds and fertilizers small holdings poor facilities for storage lack of proper marketing lack of adequate and timely credit availability etc play a major role in inhibiting agricultural growth In order to stimulate advances in agricultural productivity, NABARD has been implementing various projects that empowers the farmers to access and adopt latest production technology and various agriculture-related facilities through tailored solutions that match the farmers' needs. Be it watershed and minor irrigation. land development plantation and horticulture forestry and wasteland animal husbandry organic farming rural livelihoods setting up procurement and marketing cooperatives etc keeping in tune with its objective nabart initiated yet another innovative concept umbrella program on natural resource management up nrm nabard has been involved in the promotion of nrm natural resource management for quite some time in fact for the last uh, decade and half nabard has been promoting uh, watershed development promotion of uh, nrm sector particularly through our wadi programs this uh, has created an impact in the promotion of the natural resources but taking the initiative to the next step nabard has conceived the a new product called umbrella program for natural resources management where the emphasis would be moving away from the grant support programs to uh, credit based programs under this mainstreaming the nrm activity will be the main focus and the second emphasis would be on helping the poorest of the poor through this program with this initiative nabard has been able to make models for mainstreaming this activity in fact uh, nabard has been uh, creating models for the other agencies like bankers and the government departments to emulate and to replicate them so upnrm is one such initiative of nabard where uh, now the main focus is on conserving the natural resources of water and soil along with that even the traditional practices of cultivation are the practices of cultivation which would involve use of less resources is being the focus for us the main objective of upnrm is to generate livelihood opportunities based on sustainable natural resource use and management it revolves around beneficiaries at the grassroots level by assigning them as the key stakeholders UP NRM is a gradual shift from grant based to loan based NRM projects funding is through a corpus comprising financial cooperation from KFW Germany as well as fund mobilized by NABARD in promoting UP NRM the bank has a refreshingly new approach to the entire gamut of development and community upliftment wherein different channel partners support the implementation of various types of sustainable nrm projects the projects under this scheme are finalized strictly on the basis of conformity with nabards nrm policy conformity with the up nrm guiding principles credentials of the channel partner technical feasibility and financial viability of the project in andhra pradesh nabard sanctioned 26 projects under up nrm 
to the tune of 4,121.42 lakh rupees as loan and grant. Perhaps the NRM-based integrated livelihood projects being implemented in upland Palnadu area in Guntu district is an apt example of NABAD's contribution to mainstreaming of holistic, participatory and financially sustainable livelihood solutions for improving the livelihoods of the rural poor based on the sustainable natural resource use and management. Funded by NABAT and being implemented by service, an NGO working in the area, 394 beneficiaries were provided with loans towards sustainable NRM-based rural livelihood projects. The beneficiaries who run dairy units have installed biogas plants in their premises, resulting in marked decrease in consumption of firewood meant for cooking. Since the women save a lot of time without being exposed to smoke, which otherwise would have had health hazard implications, now undertake other productive activities. Vermicomposting is also undertaken and NPM methods are used in chili cultivation. Chili drying units have also come up in the area. The organically grown chilies fetch a good price. Besides, the usage of vermicompost in the fields has reduced the consumption of urea from 10 bags to only 3 bags per acre, thereby reducing the cost of cultivation by 10,000 rupees to 12,000 rupees per acre. By using organic fertilizers in the fields, the farmers maintain the quality of soil. The SHGs in the village prepare organic pesticide as a livelihood activity. Service has constructed two polyhouses in the region and also runs two farmers' clubs. In fact, the polyhouses have enabled individual farmers to raise nurseries. Hitherto, the farmers purchased chili plants at 70 paise to 1 rupee per plant. Since they now run their own nurseries, each chili plant cost them a mere 10 paise to 30 paise. As a result, they not only save 4,000 rupees to 5,000 rupees every year, but also earn an extra income by selling the surplus seedlings. Sarvesu Samastavalu Nabad Dwara Lon Lutiskonon. Lon Lutiskoni, Miramakal Pinchino. Gatapoin Sansra Alcante is Sansro, Shared Netlo Pinskon Navalke, Baga Makal Baga Kalaga only, Ronumur Kental and Adikanga, Paltomachindi. If Pantaka Kuga Casta Uria Yesavalo. If Pudu Vermi compost to Vapunone, Ipicharu, Spessus Board Dodora, or a period of Kicharu, I warn. Chemella Gamundi, Petuba de Gindi, Conchavana Casta, Intikatski, double of Payoparti. If a Mesla Presantro, Y Sendri Rulu, Vermi compost to Yaitene, Vasan Sedalskono, Yaitene, Maconcho Labs at Gavundi. During lean period, the farmers grow vegetables for the market. This is an additional source of income. The program is monitored periodically by NABA. The successful integrated model that is organic chili cultivation plus dairy plus biogas plant plus vermicompost units has found many takers among the farmers community. About one lakh women living in the tribal belt of Vishakapatnam depend upon firewood as the source of fuel for cooking. Twice or thrice a week, they walk long distances spending most of their time for collection of firewood. This produces a lot of smoke, causing health hazard to women and children. Apart from polluting the environment, the primary focus of the intervention is 
reduce 50% consumption of fuel world. Prevent the tribal women from walking long distances in the forest to collect firewood. Minimize indoor pollution and improve their health. Help the beneficiaries utilize their time for income generating activities. The project is being implemented by the channel partner Nehru Yuvajana Sangam along with nine TDF partners of Nabad. 20,000 tribal women from 500 villages covering 13 TDF project mandals of Vishakapatnam district are being provided with smokeless chulhas on loan basis under UPNRM. The smokeless chulhas have a two-year warranty. The project beneficiaries are provided training in the usage of chulas. Mundu poyila ite ibbande gunde yandi poyilo chinundi ma kono chang simple ga utun dandi. Mundu poyila ite pedha pedha kattalo ayi fette valami. I poyila ite mood kattalo ite vanta annam kora ayi potundi. A poyila ite ito ato particle dan kawa dandi. I poyila ite akarke na fette kochu. The NGO partners repay the principal amount as well as interest to NYS. NYS, in turn, repays the loan to NABAD in two half-yearly installments. This is an ecologically sustainable, technically feasible and financially viable project that will further the UPNRM objectives of creating community managed nrm based livelihood activities for poor communities betel vine is one of the prime crop grown traditionally by small farmers in selected mandals of vishakhapatnam district it yields a crop of 6 lakhs in leaves per acre and is marketed locally. Since most of the betel vine farmers are tenant farmers, they depend on the money lenders for raising the crop. This is due to the fact that no bank had come forward to extend loans. As a result, loans obtained from the money lenders at high rates of interest adversely affected the farmers thereby plunging them into a debt trap. But things changed for the better when Nabad extended financial support to these farmers' clubs. To begin with, joint liability groups, JLGs were formed for availing of loan to cultivate betel vine along with technical support from agricultural department. Realizing the need to help the needy farmers, the channel partner PW Max submitted a project proposal under UPNRM, wherein six villages of Payakarao Peta and S. Raivaram Mandals of Vishakapatnam district were identified for project implementation. The loan was sanctioned by NABAD under UPNRM to finance 200 tenant farmers, hold 8 capacity building programs, supply agriculture implements to them, extend livelihood support and conduct market surveys for the produce. The project is being implemented with local participation and in consultation with Gram Sabhas and JLGs. Loaning to the borrowers is made through <laughs> Tetsko, 
ఈ బ్యాంక్ వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఒకటే మాకు అందరికి హ్యాపీ జీవితాలండి బాగుంది మా గోల్డ్ కార్డు వాళ్ళు కూడాను మానిటరింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఎంటైర్ ప్రాజెక్ట్ ఇస్ డన్ బై ద మానిటరింగ్ కమిటీ ఫార్మ్డ్ విత్ ద మెంబర్స్ ఫ్రమ్ జేఎల్జీస్ అండ్ పిడబ్ల్యూ మాక్స్ రీపేమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రిన్సిపల్ అమౌంట్ బై పిడబ్ల్యూ మాక్స్ టు నాబార్డ్ విల్ బి 3 ఇయర్స్ విత్ 9 మంత్స్ గెస్టేషన్ పీరియడ్ earlier the crop raised was 100% inorganic that adversely affected health but since nabad's upnrm intervention the crop is being raised organically the upnrm has come as a boon to the tenant farmers cultivating betel vine thereby vastly reducing the interest burden With financial assistance from NABARD, sheep rearing under sustainable livelihoods approach is being implemented by Grama Swarajya Samiti, an NGO working in 35 villages of four mandals in Vishakhapatnam district of Andhra Pradesh. The project mainly caters to the livelihood needs of marginal and landless farmers and traditional shepherd community. that live in habitations close to forests and generally tend to sheep rearing and cultivation the activities covered were sheep rearing pasture development organic farming and capacity building of individuals and groups under the scheme loans were disbursed to 245 beneficiaries for sheep rearing they were identified based on experience in sheep rearing activity repaying capacity loan already borrowed from other sources membership in shgs etc 50% of the beneficiaries covered were women at the individual farmer level sheep rearing 25 plus 1 unit was sanctioned the pen for sheep is not expensive the labor required for sheep rearing is comparatively less and the foundation stock is relatively cheap the flock gets multiplied rapidly the production of meat and manure provided two different sources of income to the shepherd nadi sitaram param gram andi nenu 1995 nunchi kuda ఈ గ్రామానికి ప్రజాప్రతినిధిగా కూడా నేను సర్పంచ్గా ఎంపీటీసీగా నేను చూస్తున్నానండి నాబార్డు సహాయంతో గత సంవత్సరం ఈ యొక్క గొర్రెలు లోన్ ఇచ్చినట్లయితే మాకు ఉపాధి కలుగుతుందని చెప్పేసి అంటే సుమారు ఇరవై మందికి నాబార్డు ద్వారా కూడా ఏర్పాటు చేశారు ఎక్కువ శాతం మా యాదవ కమిటీ కమ్యూనిటీ గొర్రెల మీద ఆధారపడతారే మరి యొక్క ఉపాధి కలిగించినందుకు చాలా సంతోషకరంగా ఉంది అదేవిధంగా ఇక్కడ ఏ ఏజెన్సీ ప్రాంతంలో వాటర్ కూడా సోర్స్ లేక మంచి వాటర్ కావాలని చెప్పి ఉద్దేశంతో ఇక్కడ మేము గ్రామతో గ్రామ పంచాయతీ తరఫున ఒక బోర్వెల్ నిర్మించి అలాగే నాబార్డు ద్వారా కూడా ఇక్కడ ఒక ఐదు వేల రూపాయలతో ఇక్కడ చేసి అలాగే నా ద్వారా ఒక ఐదు వేల రూపాయలు కూడా గ్రా ఆర్థిక సహాయం కల్పించి ఇక్కడ వాటర్ ర్యాంక్ ఏర్పాటు చేసామండి మంచి మంచి కార్యక్రమాలు కూడా చేసినందుకు మాకు ఈ నాబార్డు సహాయం చేసినందుకు మా ఆనందంగా ఉందండి మా గ్రామంలో కూడా besides getting regular returns from the sale of lambs and sheep droppings that provide stability to their household income the shepherds did good business in sheep rearing and reaped good financial returns each family assisted under sheep rearing gets an additional income of 60000 rupees per year as a result the traditional shepherds do not go to the money lenders instead they avail credit facility from the ngo at lower rate of interest at the community level the project developed common property resources provided mobile veterinary aid organized capacity building programs and extended marketing support literacy levels of the community has improved so has the child education there is a sense of empowerment among the shepherd community paddy is predominantly cultivated in vishakhapatnam district 
As a result, the availability of freshly grown vegetables in the area has considerably reduced. Realizing the need for vegetables for a healthy life, the farmers from the region came forward to go in for vegetable cultivation. In order to promote sustainable livelihoods through microfinance scheme, NABAD sanctioned a project for vegetable cultivation in the villages in Vishakapatnam district. The subsidy was made available under horticulture mission. This project is being implemented in Pai Karao Peta in Vishakapatnam by Gramaswaraja Samiti. Hundred farmers are identified to take up vegetable cultivation were sponsored by SHGs. These SHGs are responsible for repayment of loan amount taken by the farmers. 50 acres of land was diverted from cotton and other crops that had irrigation facility. The vegetables being grown are chili, beans, tomato, cabbage, bhindi, brinjal, etc. Nabadru Patakamolo, Uncle Pandinsko Nazar, Bendakal, Gongura, and Ni Pandinsko and Meo, Amukunazar, Okai the Vela de Machindi, Inco Copa de Vela de Munadamago, Ego my Pandin Uncle de Sar. The farmers who were willing to cultivate fodder on their land were identified for setting up dairy units. The SHGs have taken lands on lease from the dairy farmers to produce vermicompost. NPM methods are being used for cultivation of vegetables. These are marketed in Anakapalli and Vishakapatnam. Thanks to Nabad's efforts, a slow but steady revolution is creeping in the villages across Andhra Pradesh. Thousands of acres of wastelands have turned green. Agriculture production now revolves around indigenous as well as new technologies. Farmers are reaping good profits over their produce. The landless farm laborers are gainfully employed. The rural women have turned into entrepreneurs and the village economy is on an upward swing. Mainstreaming of NRM through the UPNRM would facilitate the communities to take advantage of the same even when the NRM projects are not under implementation or beyond the NRM sector as such.